That's the thing about life. It can be unpredictable. But your dreams need not be. How far would you go to make your dreams come true? How close are you to reaching those goals set by you? While others focus on a new normal, you focus on a new beginning. Look around for what inspires you. Build your narrative. After all, it's your story to tell. Take a chance. Take a leap. Begin your study abroad journey with us. Looking for the right course for you? Welcome to ACC Global's Course Search, your one stop platform for all your international education needs. Browse through millions of free, valuable study abroad resources to pursue your international study dream. To begin your search, type in your preferred course in the search bar. Filter by subcourse category, level of study, destination preference, tuition fees, duration, and post study work visa. With a destination drop down, you can search for the preferred destinations of your choice. You can also filter down courses by top ranked universities in your preferred destination and their rankings. Browse through various career choices and you can also browse through free student resources like articles on tips to study abroad, the latest news, etc. We are here to support you with every step of your study abroad journey. To explore your course options, visit search.acclobal.com Selamat malam teman-teman AACC, apa kabar semuanya sore malam hari ini? Uh, selamat datang di live webinar session AACC Global. Bersama dengan uh, AACC kita juga punya tamu kehormatan dari University of Essex yang pada malam hari ini uh, diwakili oleh uh, Dr. Mario Guterres dan juga Christabel. Uh, nama saya Wani. Saya yang akan menjadi host pada sesi malam hari ini uh, dengan judul The Difference Between Data Science, Big Data, and Data Analytics. Jadi untuk teman-teman yang masih bingung mengenai perbedaan antara uh, data science, big data, data analytics, uh, hari ini kita punya kesempatan banyak untuk bertanya pada ahlinya. Oke. Okay. Uh, sedikit mengenai uh, Dr. Mario Guterres, uh, beliau adalah seorang pengajar di uh, faculty, di data science, uh, mathematical science di University of Essex. Mulai dari tahun uh, bulan Januari 2020 sampai saat ini. Ya, uh, kemudian beliau juga apa, mempunyai gelar PhD. Uh, in Physics dari University of Barcelona di tahun 2016 dan sebelumnya juga mempunyai gelar Master of Science in Com Computational Physics dari Universitas Poly Politeknika de Catalunya dan juga Bachelor of Science in Physics Autonomous dari University of Barcelona. 
research beliau berfokus dalam menggunakan data science and computational social science methodologies to understand and model human behaviors and its dynamics at the collective level, particularly in the context of both urban and online environments. Jadi dalam melakukan research, beliau banyak bekerja sama dengan pemegang kebijaksanaan, uh, kebijakan baik di uh, local councils dan juga private companies uh, who want to embed this methodology within the core business and data analysis. Kemudian catatan akademik lainnya, um, mereka uh, beliau adalah postdoctoral fellow di Catalan Institute of Human Palace Paleo Ecology and Social Evaluation Evolution dari tahun uh, 2016 sampai bulan Juli 2020 dan kemudian juga postdoctoral fellow uh, Behavioral Science Group di Warwick Business School University of Warwick dari bulan Agustus 2016 sampai di Maret 2020. Jadi, uh, jadi malam hari ini kita juga akan mendapatkan insight yang pastinya sangat berguna untuk teman-teman yang masih bingung untuk membedakan uh, apakah atau menentukan apakah teman-teman akan mendalami bidang data science atau big data atau data analytics. Bersama kita juga hadir uh, Miss Christabel yang merupakan the Regional Development Manager International Office dari University of Essex. Jadi uh, apabila sepanjang apa namanya uh, insight yang akan diberikan oleh Dr. Mario, bila ada pertanyaan baik yang berhubungan dengan topik yang dibicarakan atau berhubungan dengan Apapun itu mengenai kuliah di University of Essex, silahkan nggak usah pakai tunggu lama-lama, ketik aja pertanyaan Anda langsung di uh, kolom Q&A sessions. Ya, teman-teman jangan lupa ketik pertanyaan Anda di kolom Q&A sessions, bukan di chat box. Oke, okay? nanti setelah uh, Dr. Mario selesai, kita akan bahas bersama. Kalau misalnya belum sempat dibahas, saya juga ingin mengingatkan teman-teman bahwa setelah malam hari ini kita juga ada sesi one-on-one -on -one session dengan University of Essex yang mana akan diadakan besok dari jam 3 sampai jam 4 atau tanggal 23 Februari dari jam 3 sampai jam 4 atau tanggal 25 Februari dari jam 3 sampai jam 4. Jadi teman-teman uh, nanti akan diberikan link untuk mengisi kehadiran teman-teman untuk menghadiri one-on-one -on -one, uh, session dengan University of Essex. Okay, so without further ado, uh, I would like to pass the screen on to Dr. Mario Gutierrez to start the webinar sessions tonight. Over to you, Dr. Mario. Right. Thanks a lot, Lani. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. I could uh, catch some of the bits of my presentation, not uh, not everything uh, entirely, but uh, but I think that you did like a very extensive uh, presentation, and I think it was quite accurate for what I could. Uh, so thank you, thank you for that. Uh, I'm gonna start sharing my screen because I have a presentation uh, prepared. Um, just let me try to uh, share the screen. Uh, so it. In principle, you should now be uh, seeing the uh, the whole screen. Could you just tell yep. me? Uh, all right. So okay. So okay. a lot. So you can uh, actually see all this. Great. So in this uh, in this presentation, I am going to talk about uh, something that we are uh, quite recently being asked a lot uh, because uh, you know this this sector of uh, of data science, um, big data, data analytics is is, is kind of uh, booming. There are lots of like new jobs being created. Sometimes there is a little bit of uh, confusion because actually there is a lot of overlap between the different tasks of these three different kind of jobs. Before I start with the presentation, though, just let me 
uh, say that uh, I am, uh, as uh, Lani said, a lecturer in the data science and statistics in the mathematics uh, department, mat uh, Department of Mathematical Science, Sciences at the University of Essex. Uh, and this, uh, this department has actually been growing quite a lot. Uh, so now I think that we are around uh, or almost like 40, um, 40 staff in the department. And especially it's been growing uh, a lot on the, uh, on the area of uh, data science and statistics, which actually kind of reflects as well the overall uh, growing on, um, on, on how these jobs and uh, interest is, um, is being like picked up by, by the society as well, right? Um, so uh, I, as, as a prospective student, let's say, of, uh, of um, uh, or at least uh, uh, potential students interested in these kind of topics, I kind of want to address this, um, uh, this kind of overlap uh, of these uh, three uh, data science jobs or data related jobs, let's say, right? Okay, so uh, uh, before that, just let me start uh, by something that I already mentioned, which is this, uh, uh, um, this growing interest by the society on, on the data science aspect of things, on, on you know, on, on, on topics like artificial intelligence, big data, uh, data analysis, uh, the, um, any kind of uh, statistics, uh, even like uh, in, in, in sectors like journalism, uh, data science is, is changing the way, for example, that visualizations are uh, shown in the newspapers and, and, and all these kind of things. So it, it's basically a, a booming sector right now. Um, and it's quite, um, uh, it's quite uh, understandable that, that you have this, uh, this interest on this. Probably you have, you have seen uh, the words data science, uh, artificial intelligence, big data, um, uh, many times before, of course, this, uh, this session. And we are going to talk a, a little bit about it. But first, just want to stress how this has basically grown in the, in the recent years. Um, just to put some numbers of, um, uh, of uh, some time ago, so this actually should be uh, uh, actually updated and it will show even like a, a, a more impressive uh, grown. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, any of, uh, of you would remember uh, if you are old enough that before, you know, before we store the data in our hard drives, in our hard drives, in our um, flash memories, we used to have the, uh, the data stored like in, in cassettes, in, in, in CDs, and all these analog uh, ways of uh, storage data, right? Uh, with the uh, digital age, with the, upcom uh, with the upcoming of the digital age, everything started to be stored in a digital way. And this is actually very important and, and it has had a massive impact because when you store something in a digital way, it's easily to be, so it's, it's very easy to, to copy this, this data from one place to the other. It's, uh, it's very easy to, you know, to uh, start developing some processes that work in the cloud with this kind of data. It's very easy to connect different data sets in a way that they give you uh, much more insights on whatever you are studying. So the fact that uh, the data um, had uh, basically started to be uh, stored in a digital way actually represented as well a, a boom of it, uh, of, of the amounts of data that we could analyze. It also, um, uh, it also came contemporary to the, like the large amounts of, of data being used. Uh, for example, on uh, 20, I think it was 2000, 2007, uh, the first iPhone was launched. And, and from there, um, uh, you know, uh, it was pretty common that uh, uh, many people uh, had like started having like uh, smartphones. And of course, uh, all the uh, amounts of data associated to it and it's supposed like an explosion the one that you can see here on the on the left picture right and on the right uh i mean this this was a massive change uh, being produced in our uh, society and of course uh it came uh, together with an increase of like uh, postings in, in in the job market right and here you can see for example the jump from 2013 to 2017 uh, 18 that basically the, uh, the demand for data science related jobs uh, had basically tripled. I guess that if we do the, uh, the if, we, if we do the current, uh, if we crunch the current numbers for this with uh, 2022, uh, it will even represent uh, even 
a, a greater leap on, 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 on this kind of, of postings, right? Um, okay, uh, but to talk about the, uh, the three, uh, let's say, different aspects of, of data science, let me start with the definitions of them. So here you have um, uh, the definitions that are taken from the Wikipedia page. So of course the text is not mine then, but the highlighting uh, it is, right? And, and in these definitions, you can see that, for example, for data analysis, we have that uh, in these definitions appear words like uh, inspecting, cleaning, uh, modeling data, providing useful information, conclusions, uh, supporting the decision-making, that is very important. And basically, the role that data analysis is having in today's uh, in, in today's companies is, is making the decisions much more scientific and evidence-based right so so basically um, the role of uh, of data analysis is no longer something that we do in the universities only is something that is happening in any kind of businesses uh, and basically it's helping these businesses to to basically make uh, better decisions right if we if we look for uh, for the big data uh, definition in the Wikipedia, we have uh, uh, this this you can find this this definition and and then you you see like uh, uh, words like uh, uh, extracting information, um, large and complex data sets, and actually the key ideas behind big data is that because. Uh, the amount of data being stored and being processed nowadays is so large. Uh, so typically big data is, is uh, addressing all these challenges, right? That suppose having uh, uh, basically the uh, very large volumes of data, which are also very, uh, uh, very different from one to each other. So that's the variety. And also the fact that nowadays we can't even process this data, we can even extract and, and mine these, uh, these data sets in a, in a real time, right? And, and that's the B for, for the velocity. So volume, variety, and velocity are the three uh, Bs, let's say, that uh, suppose the, the challenge of, of the big data. And of course, uh, all the algorithms, um, uh, all the methodologies, techniques that uh, uh, the big data is developing to basically tackle all these uh, changes related to those aspects of, of the data. And finally, for for the third uh, for the third uh, topic that we are going to uh, to see in this webinar is the um, uh, the data science definition, right? Uh, this one is, uh, I would say, uh, more kind of generic. Uh, you can see here words like interdisciplinary, extracting knowledge, um, uh, also dealing with the fact that we have to combine information from structured data sets uh, and, and structured data sets. So, uh, so basically, um, a big uh, so data science, sorry, um, uh, tries to uh, you know. Uh, process all this uh, data that can be in many different shapes and forms and, uh, and extract this, uh, this information that might be uh, further processed for other purposes, right? Uh, key aspects, key words in, in, this, um, in this definition as well is uh, the idea of uh, unifying statistics with data analysis with machine learning and making it become one single uh, thing that we call uh, data science, right? To basically predict patterns and, and pre uh, so to detect patterns and, and predict uh, some data. So this is basically uh, uh, the, defi the, the three definitions of the topics that we're going to see and uh, we can see the difference between them. If we want uh, to summarize them, we could say that data analytics is more about extracting conclusions uh, for decision making using data, of course. Um, uh, big data is about dealing with these uh, large volumes, right, and structured data that we can also process uh, in real time. Uh, and uh, data science is uh, more generic uh, in the sense that it's detecting patterns in data and trying to predict future outcomes, right? Which many of the, of course, businesses are very interested on on this kind of aspect of data science. Sometimes people, I see some some of the um, uh, when, when someone talks about big data, I've uh, seen several times that they kind of do this kind of Venn diagram where you have these overlapping, um, these overlapping uh, sections of uh, for the big data, data science and data analytics. To be honest, I don't think that this is, uh, so that, that's not how I see it. I see it in a different way. For me, uh, 
um, the, the whole thing is one, uh, one, single, um, one single problem, which is basically processing the data. Uh, and, uh, and there are several aspects uh, of processing data that they're involved, right? So you can process data and you can do it in a, uh, in a way uh, that, that you are doing the task of uh, data analytics. You can also process the data uh, in, a, in, a, in a way where, uh, you know, tackling a big data problem, for example, where you're trying to um, uh, extract and, and process all these like huge, uh, uh, huge uh, uh, data sets uh, that are also bright and you may, might want to process them in real time and data science, which is like detecting part. So, so the whole thing for me is not just separate fields. Uh, for me, it's I see it in like uh, like three different aspects of the same thing, which is uh, processing data. All right. So if we focus more on the task, so what, for example, a data analyst would do. Uh, so typically, a data analyst would clean and process these data sets. Um, this is very useful, of course, to 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 get um, uh, to get useful insights uh, after uh, you analyze uh, the, the process. So. Uh, as you will see in a second, the data analysts have to master techniques of like data cleaning um, um, and data. Um, so basically data imputing, which means like uh, dealing with uh, the cases where data is not present or there are some errors in the data. So this, this kind of task is something that a data analyst could do. And more importantly, to generate these reports and visualizations to support the decision making. Right. So if you want the companies to make uh, evidence-based decisions, you need to communicate those decisions in an effective way, um, uh, even if it is to the general public or uh, or to the, you know, to the uh, to the government uh, board of the uh, company or the CEO or, or someone. Um, so you really need to uh, also make uh, all your analysis and conclusions that you have structured from the data um, very uh, clear so that uh, they, they can support this, uh, this basically the decision making process in, in those in those areas. So the, the typical tasks of a big data engineer, uh, as I said before, are more related to build these architectures for storing large volumes of data, processing them in, in, uh, in real time, for example, from multiple sources. Um, and also, once you have all these architectures being built, uh, a big data engineer will also take care of identifying bottlenecks, optimizing uh, the data processing so that it takes less time to process the data. In uh, you can also reduce the noise by, uh, you know, uh, making a uh, more optimal um, uh, so the, the the data the data processing uh, more uh, optimal uh, and less uh, error prone. Uh, you can also, it's, it's actually a very important task for a big data engineer to make these uh, systems scalable. So if we, if we imagine like, uh, for example, that Facebook started with a, a very, being like a very small uh, website and, and how it has grown. So you can imagine that at the beginning, maybe the, the kind of data that, they, that Facebook was having at the beginning could be like uh, stored in a, uh, in, a, in a simple computer, but nowadays, um, in a simple, in, in, a, in a very simple hard drive in a computer, but nowadays they really need massive warehouses spread over the world uh, in order to make uh, the, the whole system work, right? So this is about scalability and any, any business um, that, that typically starts with a, uh, with a very small uh, data needs, uh, uh, if it's successful, uh, th those needs kind of scale with the number of users, the number of data generated, and, and the, the, the task of a big data engineer here is to is to basically make those systems scalable, so it's easy to um, uh, to basically increase the number of users or the number of, of data uh, processed without affecting the normal functioning of, of the business. Finally, uh, we have here the tasks of the data scientist, which is, uh, as I said before, uh, making uh, basically uh, making sense of information that it might be at the beginning disconnected. So one of the main tasks of a data scientist is to explore, okay, what kind of data sets we can use in order to extract some knowledge that we can further use for um, for making our business better or, uh, or you know, making our administration better, right? Uh, it also 
uh, tries to detect patterns uh, and predict future outcomes. So uh, prediction is, is uh, one of the key areas of, of, of data science. Uh, we usually do that by, by detecting such patterns in the data. And typically we, we do this using machine learning models or artificial intelligence models that basically uh, process the data in a way that uh, can provide those uh, those predictions, right? So again, what's the difference between uh, these, these kind of tasks that uh, a data analyst, a big data engineer, and a data scientist would uh, uh, would uh, do in a, in a company or in an administration? Basically, the data analyst focuses more on the conclusion storytelling and supporting the decision making, um, uh, basically in the communicate communication aspect of it, also in the analysis. Uh, the big data engineer is more uh, focused on making these systems scalable and able to process these large uh, uh, amounts of data. And the focus of the data scientist is designing these uh, methodologies, including finding the data sets to, um, to detect these patterns and basically apply the machine learning techniques. So that's basically the difference between them. But as you can see, they are all very much uh, related. Uh, and important skills that uh, they, a data analyst and big data engineer and a data scientist uh, should have, uh, they are very related to each other. And uh, in fact, all of them, you can uh, learn them as I will uh, talk later in our, uh, in our courses on data science at the University of, uh, the University of Essex. But if, uh, if we uh, are more specific and we take into account the focus uh, that we uh, just mentioned for the data analyst, for example, uh, you might think that in the programming side of, uh, of things, uh, Python R, Tableau, uh, libraries for visualization like V3, or also Power BI is typically uh, uh, an important skill to have as a data analyst. Uh, of course, basic notions of statistic, very important that you know how to clean data sets, how to, uh, how to um, uh, generate visualizations that communicate the results of your analysis and your conclusions. And of course, you have to write reports as a data analyst, you have to provide conclusions, you have to communicate uh, the results of your work. So, uh, you know, writing and communicating skills are very important. For a big data engineer, in the programming side of things, um, uh, it could be more interesting. So, of course, uh, Python, R, Tableau, all these things are uh, very welcome and actually at some point very necessary. But uh, a big data engineer also uh, focuses more on learning languages that are uh, related to extracting information from databases, like, for example, SQL, Scala, Sparkle. Uh, also, uh, it's, it's very good to have uh, skills on, on dealing data in non-SQL uh, databases, which uh, nowadays I would say that if you have a big company like, let's say, Amazon or, or Facebook or whatever, or Twitter or any, any company that deals with large amounts of data, this kind of data is not stored in a way that is kind of related because that is not efficient. Um, so having skills on how to on knowing how to process this, this kind of data sets uh, is very useful. Of course, data mining and dealing with uh, distributed systems, typically in the cloud as well, making these cloud architectures is, is very, uh, are very useful skills for a big data engineer. Finally, a data scientist uh, should also know like Python and R for programming because much of the analysis and mathematical modeling and statistics is done in these kind of languages. Uh, they are very popular, but also, uh, if we, um, if we uh, are a bit more picky, let's say, uh, uh, it would be also interesting that the data scientist knows how to uh, use uh, programming languages like TensorFlow, which is uh, very related and, and closely linked to uh, artificial intelligence and, and, and how to you know, build these architectures of neural networks, which is one type of, uh, of uh, machine learning models. And, and basically also, has to have like a basic uh, knowledge of statistics, mathematical modeling, and, and knowing these artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques. That's, that's uh, uh, probably the most important thing and what makes it uh, more special with respect to the other, um, to the other uh, jobs, let's say, right? Um, so I also 
uh, compiled some information from from Glassdoor here in the UK, just to give you some uh, some examples of the job perspective. So one of the advantages of data analysts, even if they have uh, tend to have like the average lower salary, uh, although uh, uh, the data analyst is much more flexible in the sense that it can work for many different uh, companies, from health to you know energy, gaming, travel, and so. Uh, big data uh, engineers uh, are you can typically find, find them in in finance for example you can uh, you, you can you can uh, you can clearly see that for example in finance you have a lot of information coming out coming up in, in uh, coming out in real time so processing all this information uh, in real time is uh, is very important for you know investment banks and these kind of things it's, it's very important they they have all this information ready uh, um, also, uh, it's very important as well for, for the retail industry to have uh, data pipelines uh, built in a way that they can easily see whether they need to order more uh, provisions for like certain products and, and so on. Um, uh, data science, so data, so uh, typically data scientists are um, from these three, the ones that typically have a larger uh, salary. But this is also related to the fact that they use machine learning a lot, and this is, is, is uh, something that uh, uh, businesses are demanding. You can uh, demanding uh, uh, pretty much right now. You can you can see how, for example, in the advertisement industry, uh, now with all these uh, data traces that we leave when we you know when we scroll in our Instagram, in our Twitter, in our Facebook uh, platforms. So you can leave a lot of uh, data behind and data traces, and all this is, is basically processed by the data scientists to boost the, you know, the to make the the advertisement so the the uh, the advertisements more targeted. Uh, so you can clearly see how in the advertisement company the data science are um, very um, very well searched. Uh, you know, in the e-commerce search engines, uh, so there's many uh, places where data scientists can can work nowadays in order to, um, you know, detect patterns in you know in in in, in online behavior of uh, of humans and trying to make predictions. So these are you know some of the job perspectives that uh, they're currently uh, these jobs have in the in the UK, of course. You can check all this data again in, in the glass door if you want by searching for for these topics right data analyst big data engineer and data scientist uh, finally i want to before i start talking about the university i want to give you a real example of uh of what these uh, three types of data uh, jobs would do in a company such as netflix that probably you all know right so if you think uh so if you ask yourself what the data analyst would do in netflix so one example could be like uh, a data analyst would study um uh, how the you know how the different tv series and, and films are being watched uh uh in in you know in the current month for example and, and and trying to find like some patterns in there depending on the profile of the users depending on uh you know the um uh, the the you know the the current movies that are available in Netflix. So basically, crunching all these numbers uh, in dashboards that that you actually can see here on the left, uh, in order to make decisions on, for example, what are the next um, so to recommend uh, movies uh, and uh, and to basically advertise new uh, new um, production from Netflix for for the next season, right? So you can clearly think of a data analyst as someone who analyzes the data of the, the current uh, you know, season, let's say uh, in the last three months, uh, in order to make recommendations for, for the producers in Netflix. So, okay, you, you, you probably should now because um, I don't know this. There is this. Uh, there is this new movie that it's in the you know in the cinemas about uh, science fiction. So maybe we should focus our next season on science fiction and, and promote more science fiction uh, movies that are already in Netflix. Uh, and, and and in this way, you boost basically the numbers of of viewings, right? So um, uh, they could also make recommendations on on acquisitions on uh, on on basically. Uh, acquiring the rights of, of new movies or TV series, depending on the 
on the on the sense of uh, of of the market. Uh, a big data engineer in Netflix uh, has also a very important role, right? Because when you uh, when you go to Netflix and you want to watch a movie um, uh, right now, so now you don't have to download, you don't have to wait, you don't have to uh, go to uh, cinema. You can just open your laptop and and. Or, and watch the, the, uh, the movie from there. But if you think about having all this information readily available for you to watch in real time, um, I mean, it's not, uh, it's not uh, easy, right? If you think about Netflix, the kind of data that they will have, of course, uh, they will have like uh, all the movies and TV series, but they also have to have data like the subtitles in different languages. They also have to have data about your credit card because they are changing, charging you every month. They have to have uh, data about the profiles of of the of the users. Uh, they have to have data about the ratings, right? Because uh, uh, ra rating movies is an important uh, thing for for Netflix and and it's a way that can recommend you other similar movies. Uh, and basically connecting all this information so that everything uh, is, uh, uh, it works uh, kind of smoothly when you are uh, using the Netflix platform is, uh, is, 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 is basically the job of, of a big data engineer, right? Uh, making that uh, all this information is available to you or, or, to, or to anyone in the, in the Netflix company uh, uh, for uh, basically making the, the whole Netflix function. Finally, a data scientist in Netflix, as we said, is the probably the person behind the recommendation system. I'm pretty sure that uh, the, the ones um, uh, uh, that have used Netflix, uh, uh, you can really experience how after, you know, some time using Netflix, after watching several movies, Netflix is very good at recommending things that you would probably like, right? Uh, and, uh, and how it does this? Well, basically it, it gets information from many different places. So of course it gets information from the content that you watch, but also it gets information about the ratings from other people. It gets information about um, social media, even how you are uh, connected to other persons. It gets information about your uh, demographic attributes, uh, for example, the gender, the age, and, and these kind of things. And it basically allows it to crunch all this information to make the best recommendations to you. And they are usually quite accurate. Uh, right, so so this is what is in the core of of, of the Netflix recommendation system, which is one of the uh, core features of, of of this platform. Right, so this is the this would be the task of of the big data uh, of the sorry of the data scientist in Netflix. All right, so with this uh, example, I do uh, finish this this uh, first part of of the webinar talking about these uh, three different data related jobs. Of course, happy to answer any question later about them if you have. Uh, but now I'm, I'm going to talk more about what are we offering uh, here in the, in the University of Essex uh, that is related to, to the uh, degrees on data science. And in fact, we have uh, three uh, types of three different courses on data science. So we have uh, the Master uh, of Data Science, which uh, this one is, is basically targeting uh, students with strong uh, maths and computing knowledge. So typically these kind, so the kind of students that should apply for, for these masters are, you know, students from statistics, from maths, from computer science, sometimes from um, uh, closely related um, um, courses like, uh, or degrees like uh, um, uh, electronic engineering or even physics sometimes depends on on your background on on, on maths and, and computing as well uh, and then we also have two other courses on data science that we basically categorize them or label them as uh, conversion courses so these courses are uh, data science and its applications and applied data science both of them are conversion courses which means that uh, we are targeting students without any strong uh, background in maths and computing. For the first one, data science and its applications, the kind of students that we are targeting there is our students who have done a STEM degree, right? So you could think of here uh, students with some knowledge of maths, probably also some knowledge on computing, but not as strong as someone who has done uh, stats or, or who has done computer science, right? 
Um, uh, and, and finally, the third course that we are also offering uh, is for uh, basically students uh, with no uh, with a degree that is basically far STEM or non STEM at all. And our idea here is that we think that data science is so important in our society nowadays that we think that students that have not done any degree in um, you know in 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 any in, you know, in any related field where maths or, or programming is important, we still think that uh, uh, data science is an important skill that we can provide them. Of course, in, in, this, in this course, in, in the applied data science course, uh, all the models that, that, uh, that you will have there uh, are very, very applied, uh, which means that we are not going to go through the you know foundations or mathematical or statistical foundations of the ideas in, in data science and machine learning instead is more focused on providing applications from which you can basically uh, get some uh, useful skills right um, and this is how basically we're making data science available for uh, for many different kind of profiles right so uh, no matter which uh, degree you are coming from uh, in Essex you will find your uh, your course uh, on data science that, that you will really uh, enjoy. Okay, so why uh, it's, uh, and I'm going to sell uh, our uh, university uh, and also the data science aspect of, of, of our university, why it's good to study data science at Essex? Well, basically several factors. Uh, there is the first one that I really like. It's not related to data science, and maybe we can talk about it later. Maybe Cristobal later is going to uh, uh, also talk about it. But it's a, it's a campus-based university that is very close to London, and this is very appealing for, for many students. And I would put this as reason number one. But if we, we focus more on, on data science aspect of things, so Essex is hosting the... Uh, so Essex uh, is... Uh, is uh, uh, hosting the Institute for uh, Analytics and Data Science, which is a, an institute that organizes, for example, summary courses, events on data science. They are very active. Uh, there are many departments involved in, uh, in this institute. The maths department is, of course, uh, very much involved in it, but also other departments, such as like computer science department, um, uh, sociology department, the, the EBS, the Essex Business School is also involved in this, uh, in this institute and, and, and basically what it ties together, all the events uh, and, and courses in this institute is the fact that they are all to do with data science. Uh, Essex uh, University is also hosting the Institute for Social and Economic Research and the UK Data Archive, which is one of the largest uh, uh, data archive in, in the UK with lots of uh, data sets on um, different uh, social aspects of things. Essex is also uh, very well known and internationally recognized for, uh, for uh, social uh, sciences degrees. Uh, so it's good that uh, all these institutions are also in here because it provides um, uh, very useful links with uh, data science. Uh, one of the top uh, things uh, about uh, University of Essex is that we are in the top 10 in the UK for the number of knowledge partnerships. So for the ones that you don't know, knowledge partnerships are partnerships between private companies and uh, universities, right? So we have a lot of collaborations with the industry and also with the local councils. And these collaborations sometimes are very important um, for our master students because they can, for example, do the, the dissertation in a data that, for example, a particular company is working with, and, and eventually, maybe at the end of, of, the, of, the, of the master's degree, this company can be interested in your profile because they already know you and, and you have been working with uh, their kind of data. Uh, sometimes, uh, and this is actually very important, I'm going to uh, just jump to the next slide. So these are examples of the, uh, of the ongoing, um, um, some of the ongoing uh, knowledge uh, partnerships with uh, knowledge transfer partnerships with the University of Essex, but sometimes, and I didn't mention that in, uh, in our uh, degree, especially the, the data science degree. So we have, um, we have the possibility to do a placement. Uh, a placement in our degrees is basically a year that you, that you are uh, working 
for a company doing an internship in a company. And this happens after your taught uh, modules. So after one year of, of being at uh, Essex and, 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 and learning uh, from all these modules, uh, then you basically spend a year on a company. And then uh, after that, after that internship, you basically do your dissertation and you finish your, your degree there. And we think that this, uh, this kind of experience uh, working uh, or doing an internship with a company is also very, uh, very appealing to, to many people and, and it's very uh, uh, important on, on, it can be very important on your data science career. And finally, just to uh, sell, uh, to uh, basically uh, show off a little bit of uh, our graduates uh, on data science, so the kind of places that they have uh, gone uh, to work for. Uh, you have, you can recognize here some some big names like IBM, Google, BT, um, you know, uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, AXA, uh, which is a finance uh, uh, big company, and many other companies. So basically, um, that would be it. Uh, and thanks a lot for uh, for listening to me and happy to uh, answer any, any questions now. Thank you so much, Thank Mario. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, I think just to sort of like to touch a little bit on what Dr. Maria has already shared. Mungkin saya akan pakai bahasa aja ya buat teman-teman di sini. Jadi saya representative University of Essex. Kayaknya banyak banget chatnya. Jadi what I'm gonna do, I will share my screen untuk apa? Kasih lihat aja kampusnya kita seperti apa. Dan setelah itu kita akan mulai uh, menjawab Q&A sessionnya ya. Saya akan coba share my screen. Oke. Okay. Jadi uh, Essex ini kita punya tiga kampus. Cuman hari ini kita akan fokus di Colchester. Itu kampus kita yang paling besar dan 90% subjek-subjek kita ada di situ. Kenapa saya hanya fokus di situ hari ini? Karena uh, data science yang tadi kayak kalian lihat itu data science, data analytics, mathematics department itu semuanya di Colchester campus. Gitu. Oke, ini saya akan share. Hi everyone, my name is Asha and welcome to the Colchester campus tour. We're starting off firstly here by the lakes. It is the nicest place on campus and it's a great way to study and have a barbecue and chill with your friends. The campus is made up of five interlinking squares and we're surrounded by all this incredible parkland. So let's get going. This is the Silbred Student Center. Let's go inside and check it out. Here you'll be able to come for student information, support, the finance desk, the IT desk and some study spaces. And now we're in the Creative Studios, which is located at the back of the Silbrod Center. Here's where you come for everything student media. Right next to the Silbrod Center, you'll be able to find the Lakeside Theatre Cafe. Let's go inside. And now let's head down to the Lakeside Theatre. Welcome to the Albert Sloman Library. Here you'll find six floors of books, archives, and one of the only four Paternoster lifts in the UK. So this is our Ivor Crew Lecture Hall. This is where you're going to be coming for your graduation ceremony once you finish your degree. So opposite Ivor Crew, we've got Waterstone. So if you like books like me, you'll be in there all the time. Next door is Art Exchange, our art gallery, which shows some really cool exhibitions. Let's head on to square four. Here you'll be able to come to one of our two stores to go and grab some bits and bobs. We've got the post office, and there's a lot of places to eat around square four, so go and check that out, my favorite stop bar. And this is square three. Here you'll find the SE reception, great coffee in the kitchen, lots of places to eat, and below us is the nightclub Sub Zero. So this 
is the Lecture Theatre Building, also known as the LTB. They'll have quite a few lectures in here and it's also the home to the SC Zone Cinema. And this is our sports arena. Next door, we have a sports hall with a gym and a climbing wall. And behind these, you'll find our sports pitches and acres of green space. As you can see, we've got some interesting looking architecture all over campus. For example, our carbon neutral business school, our Wivenau House Hotel and the STEM Centre. And that's the end of our tour now. Thank you so much for following me around campus and I can't wait to see you soon. saya akan stop sharing dan uh, kita langsung masuk aja ke Q&A sessions. I think we will just jump to the Q&A session right away because I see there are quite a number of questions. <laughs> so uh, I think most of them are related to um, sort of like the academic side. So if you yeah. want to start. Yeah, sure. yeah. I, I, can, I can try to go ahead. I'm not sure if, if I click in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, can you see the question? Yeah, I can see the question. Yeah, or maybe I can just read it. But basically, Farrell says, uh, I would like to ask about the difference between uh, data analyst and data engineer based on important things. Like, doesn't mean that data analyst doesn't really need to about SQL. No, it's not. It's not exclusive. As I said, I I see all these jobs as one uh say one of the one whole thing, right? It's processing data. Of course, it's very interesting that uh, the data analyst knows about SQL because this way it will have access to basically um, uh, better performance when um, extracting data from uh, from um, uh, from SQL databases. And this is actually a very important thing. It's just that I was mentioning just the focus of uh, of, of some of the jobs, right? Um, that is another question from Farid. Uh, hi, Mario. Thank you for the explanation. Can you explain why writing sport uh, is an important skill for a data analyst? Yes. So the, the idea here is that uh, a data analyst um, is uh, because wants to basically use this insight from their analysis to the decision making process. It's very important to communicate uh, those um, uh, those results or those conclusions to uh, to whoever is in charge of the decision making process, right? Doesn't mean that the other two roles do not have or do not need uh, uh, to have uh, writing and communicating skills. No, it doesn't mean that. It, it just means that for a data analyst, it's very important to communicate the results. Uh, of course, it's also very important for a big uh, data engineer and, and a data scientist, but their focus is more somewhere else. And I think that the focus of a data analyst is more on basically uh, properly communicating these results. Uh, in, uh, I'm gonna uh, go and, uh, and ask this one from uh, Nuglo. Uh, in order to uh, be able to join the maths of data science and learning, should we be mastering all these important skills of uh, of data related field? No, you shouldn't. That's why you are studying. So you are studying for basically acquiring these skills, right? So we are gonna teach you all that. Um, next question from Farrell. In some cases, it is possible that uh, data analysts people old uh, data analyst people also deal with the uh, data engineering field of course they are very much related actually uh, don't think it as like a convert convert man so, so from different separate compartments right so you can uh, definitely be uh, a data analyst by train and then work as a as a big data engineer or the other way around or even you can uh, for example my my background is not even in data science because at the time that i studied this uh it was not even existed uh, with this name right i studied physics and then i moved to uh, to to data science and all these things are, are possible of course and uh, i don't think that is like something very rigid that you cannot 
you have to very choose from the very beginning. No, it's something that it's very related. Uh, one uh, type of job is very related to each other. So usually there is uh, a lot of uh, uh, moving from uh, within these uh, these areas. Right, another one. Uh, is it possible for a person uh, having all uh, this part in their career uh, or is it better to stick one specialized with it? I would say, well, depends depends on whether you know uh, clearly what you want to do. Data science is a very open field. Uh, you can so even if you master the methods and you know the statistics, machine learning, um, big data, even if you master all that, the kind of problems that you are probably be working on might be from different fields. You can you can do data science on the biology on medicine. You can do data science on the advertisement. You can do data science on sports even. So uh, so by I would say that by nature. Uh, all these kind of um, um, all, all all these kind of jobs are basically tackling very different problems. So unless you really know uh, in which area you want to specialize, there is no need to to do that. Um, right, another one. Uh, talking about data analytics, especially visualization, the one uh, the one that we visualize is based on the descriptive statistics only. I'm not sure if I get this question, but uh, but. Uh, I would say that for the data analytics is very important to uh, well both to use uh, uh, descriptive statistics, but also to generate these visualizations that help to communicate these statistics. Sometimes, as a data analyst, you have to talk to people that they are not experts on maths or on stats, and you have to find ways to basically communicate all this knowledge. And one way, of course, is via visualizations. That's what I uh, I think it's important. Right, next one. How accurate data analysis to assist for the decision making? How did you serve? Uh, how did you serve data analysis in storytelling? Basically, I'm from management and eager to learn data analytics. Uh, what first step you should take uh, since this skill from mathematics and how did you consistently solve problems through data? Well, depends on the uh, on the D, on the specific problem, right? So uh, uh, I cannot, of course, I. I, I uh, you say that you are uh, you are from management and probably the kind of problems that you are having, some of them probably can be tackled from data science, but because uh, um, we're not going to get into the specifics of this in general, um, uh, basically data analytics uh, is to uh, solve this problem uh, in a way that you do not rely on your intuition, but instead uh, you can have actual data that supports your conclusion. For example, should we doing this? Should we doing that? Actually, on management, it's, 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 uh, it's quite interesting because in the human resources area, there is a lot of um, there is a lot of innovative methods that are being used for hiring new people, processing the 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 uh, the, the curriculums of of different people. For example, that's one area of uh, where data science is actually. Um, um, you know, growing and providing some results. I'm not sure if this is uh, your kind of problem, but but this is one of the examples of uh, uh, of, uh, of of these kind of jobs. Now, for the uh, for the first part, why it's important? Uh, how did, uh, so, how accurate is to? Uh, no, how did you serve data analysis in storytelling? Well, I guess that what you um, are asking here is how they are kind of interrelated, and basically. Uh, it's much better to communicate an idea if you design it in a way that you tell a story, right? So this is like a very good skill for a data analyst. If you can't tell the conclusions of your analysis in a way that it's uh, uh, it can be digested from the people who haven't done these analyses or who have not who are not experts on maths and stats, that is much better. All right, uh, the last three. I wonder the science. Sorry. I'm gonna clean here. I wonder data scientists need to update the algorithm from time to time, right? For example, Netflix, or it's just a one-time algorithm. Well, no, of course. Usually, it's uh, it's something that it's evolving, right? And uh, for example, for the case of of the big data, I talked about the optimization process and how they have to constantly uh, be improving things so that the whole thing can work in in a, in a smooth way and. Again, an important thing here: making things scalable, right? It's not the same uh, if you have Netflix and you, uh, when at the very beginning, where they had like very few users, uh, where um, uh, in com in comparison to now, where it's basically 
all over the world and they have to store this uh, data in very different places. So connecting all these like much bigger problem and for the reason you have to constantly update your uh, algorithms. Um, this one, uh, data science and data analytics are uh, both uh, twins in the before processing or is just assignment for data analytics? No, they, it's so cleaning and uh, processing or pre-processing, I guess you, you, you are referring here, uh, is, uh, is important in, 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 uh, for any type of job, even if it's uh, uh, data analytics and data scientists. I just was focusing in data analytics because it's closer to the end goal of, 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 their, uh, of their results. Of course, you also need uh, clean data uh, to uh, use that or to process that data using like, for example, artificial intelligence or machine learning. If you have data sets that are not clean and they contain some errors, it's quite likely that your algorithms are uh, going to produce errors and bad predictions as well, right? So it's very important for, uh, for actually for both of these kind of jobs to, to clean the data sets. But uh, again, in my presentation, I was not saying that uh, for one job is important and for the other is not. I just said that um, probably this kind of job, uh, uh, that focus is, is important, right? And the last one, hi everyone, I would like to ask a question. So my program is education and management, but I'm interested in joining master data science program. Is it required that to have IT mathematics is education background joining the program? No, it's not. And that's why we are offering the masters on uh, applied uh, data science, which probably would be the best uh, according to your uh, background, right? So please, um, uh, Marisa, check that out. Uh, you can uh, basically, I'm going to very quickly uh, share uh, my screen with you and show you how, um, just a second. Uh, for example, for this one, uh, you can quickly, oops, sorry. Right, so can you see my screen? So if, for example, if you Google SX MSC Applied Data Science, you will land in this page where you have all the information about uh, this particular course. Is the same applies for the for the data science uh, master and the data science and its application, right? So you have here all the description, you have the entry requirements, you have the structure, and in the structure you can see the different uh, the different modules that you are going to uh, that you are going to take. You have some description of the models. You can also have some links in here that takes you to the model directory where there is more specific information about this. So please feel free to, you know, to, to use this uh, SX uh, uh, website pages for the courses. You will find very interesting information in there. Okay, and I think that with this, I have answered all the Q and A's. Yes, I think you have. Thank you so much, Dr. Mario. <laughs> Oke, okay. um, teman-teman terima kasih uh, untuk segala pertanyaannya. Mudah-mudahan uh, dapat menjawab apa yang sudah ditanyakan uh, tadi. Namun kalau misalnya teman-teman masih punya banyak pertanyaan mengenai University of Essex, jangan lupa uh, ada beberapa schedule yang sudah dijadwalkan oleh Uh, perwakilan dari University of Essex uh, dan teman-teman su uh, sudah mendapatkan link untuk pendaftaran di hari di besok tanggal 18 jam 3 sampai jam 4 kemudian di tanggal 23 Februari dari jam 3 sampai jam 4 serta tanggal 25 Februari dari jam 3 sampai jam 4 uh, jangan lupa daftarkan Kemudian nanti Krista Bell, who is the Regional Development Manager, International Office dari University of Essex, will also be there during the one-on-one -on -one session dan akan siap menjawab segala pertanyaan Anda mengenai University of Essex. Oke, okay. demikianlah session pada malam hari ini. Uh, we'd like to thank you, Dr. Mario, for such an interesting uh, topic about Uh, data analyst, big data, and data scientist. Uh, thank you so much for that. And also, Abel, thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, 
dan juga kepada teman-teman, terima kasih banyak sudah hadir di webinar sesi kita malam hari ini. Sampai berjumpa lagi uh, di one-on-one -on -one session with University of Essex besok tanggal 23 dan 25 Februari. Stay safe and stay healthy, teman-teman. Selamat malam. Thanks a lot, Thank you, everyone. That's the thing about life. It can be unpredictable. But your dreams need not be. How far would you go to make your dreams come true? How close are you to reaching those goals set by you? While others focus on a new normal, you focus on a new beginning. Look around for what inspires you. Build your narrative. After all, it's your story to tell. Take a chance. Take a leap. Begin your study of our journey with us. Looking for the right course for you? Welcome to ASUC Global's Course Search, your one-stop platform for all your international education needs. Browse through millions of free, valuable study abroad resources to pursue your international study dream. To begin your search, type in your preferred course in the search bar. Filter by subcourse category, level of study, destination preference, tuition fees, duration and post-study work visa. With a destination drop-down, you can search for the preferred destinations of your choice. You can also filter down courses like top-ranked universities in your preferred destination and their rankings. Browse to various career choices. And you can also browse to free student resources like articles on tips to study abroad, the latest news, etc. We are here to support you with every step of your study abroad journey. To explore your course options, visit search.acclobal.com.